All right, we are now joined in studio by a very special guest, Christy Kerr, 20-time LPGA Tour winner, won a couple major championships, over $19 million in career earnings, which is a little shot at our guy, uh, Kevin Kisner, who he always drops that number as well. <laughs> She's up there with Kiz, which I love to hear, but you're here, you're in studio. First impressions walking into Barstool Sports. Well, you guys just moved, didn't you? It needs a little work. That's what I think. Thank God you didn't see our last one. <laughs> it was yeah. it was a pigsty, the last one. So at well, least Well, thank one. you. I'm honored to be here. You have such a following. And uh, even even though I'm a golfer, I make alcohol. It's way cooler, right? So we got the Loch Lomond whiskey in here. This is, uh, of course, the official spirit of the Open Championship. Talk a little bit about, you know, the scotch, the whiskey, how you got involved. Well, um, I started a wine company in 2008 – um, which our first brand was called Curvature. Okay. We, we made that with one of the top 100 wine estates in the world by Robert Parker, uh, Pride Mountain Vineyards. If you haven't been there, it's a beautiful wine estate. I recommend anybody going to it. And then we got popular pretty quickly. Got a lot of great, great media stuff. We were served at the White House for a state dinner. Um, my love of wine and wine education continued. Uh, we started the Kerr Cellars brand in 2013 with Helen Keplinger. She was on the cover of Wine Spectator. She was Food and Wine Magazine Winemaker of the Year. Um, and uh, my education continued and uh, passed my level one sommelier exam uh, a couple years ago. And I'm studying to be a certified SOM. So SOMs not only do wine, but they do spirits. So it was pretty cool to be over at the Scottish Open uh, two years ago and to be able to, th it, this really all started with me going to Loch Lomond Distillery because I wanted to learn about scotch and how they make scotch and see their see their cooperage and um, I don't know I just kind of started geeking out about wine and scotch and um, I hit it off with Colin who's, uh, who's oh yeah who's one of the owners and um, away we went so it sounds like you like alcohol yeah kind of not on the golf course though. being a sommelier is one of the it blows my mind I don't know how you do it I, it, it, it's one of those things that I always thought was fake. I There's will say no way you can tell the difference between one wine and the other just by swishing it around your there mouth. There were a bunch of words in there that I didn't understand. <laughs> when you said you were you got your license, you got all this, I don't know what those are, but is that what it is? You can know the difference between a bunch of different yeah, wines. You can tell like you can tell like what what like vine it comes from, all that stuff, right? Can't you? I'm not at that level, um, but I'm studying and studying is doing a lot of research. Research is drinking a lot of wine, a lot of stuff. <laughs> right. So it's all research. So when <laughs> when people that like us great. say, you know, I can't tell the difference between like, you know, two buck chuck and uh, a two hundred dollar bottle of wine. You well, you're going to know the difference today. I can tell you that <laughs> two hundred dollar bottle hangover. of scotch right here. That's right. That's nice. And yeah, the Lock Lomond. But you. So like, what can you tell? What can you very easily either by, you know, swishing it around or taking a sip I or mean, two? Um, so the quartermaster sommeliers um, has this thing called a deductive tasting method, which there are five step five steps in which you can break a wine down by color, by the nose, by the palate, um, the amount of oak on the wine, the amount of crushed rock or whatever it may be um so they teach this to you and uh, i'm usually way too quick on the draw and i usually get it wrong half the time because i just i want to get it right yeah so i can't you know i go really fast um <laughs> but um if i do take my time and i do break it down like they've they've taught us to do um i would say i can get it most of the time that's crazy to me yeah me too because like a uh a uh, sommelier, am I saying that right? Sommelier. Sommelier, sommelier, sommelier. same thing. Uh, they'll come up to the table at like a really fancy restaurant or a nice, you know, a nice establishment, and then they'll they'll talk about the wine. You're like blown away. Me, like I'm just like, give me anything red. Like I don't know, mm -hmm. and you, I'll just listen to what you say. But then the one day you come up to like a, a an expert wine drinker, you got to be on your game. Well, it sounds like we need to do a barstool sports wine tasting class at some point too. Ooh. Done. Ooh. We should do it at Brelli's. His family or a, his. or a whiskey tasting. Yeah, we are doing the whiskey tasting today. Yeah. Well, we have one anyways. So which, which is a very rare 2002 first year I ever won a tournament, single malt. That's what Scott this is right Lock here. Scott Lomond whiskey. Yes. I am a delicate little flower, as uh, that's true. He <laughs> is. Sir Nick Faldo called me, but um, I will try. I will try it. Only one of four thousand bottles produced. Are you okay. kidding? Me? Is that yep. right? Yep. Oh my! Look at that bottle. Look at that box. Look at the it's box. Beautiful. The bottle. So we're opening this puppy up right now. Yeah. So I meant to say box. You had me at whiskey. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah. So oh, look at that bottle. Is. You know what? What is it about this scotch that you like so much? Well, what are some qualities? I happen to be a huge fan of the Loch Lomond Distillery um, and their whiskey because they're in Scotland. They're, it's the home of golf. They're one of the oldest houses there. I mean, 1814 they started. Mm. So they have... 
18, I mean, 14. readily available is the 12 and the 18 year um, that you can find in the New York marketplace. Um, but, you know, they're distributed in 100 countries around the world, um, nearly every state. I mean, they're, they're huge. Then they offer so many different kinds of products. And I kind of geek out when I go to the distillery because I get to taste the stuff that is only sold at the distillery. Right. Much like you would go to Napa or anywhere else yeah. where they have wine just for the winery. So yeah. that was a special experience for me. Um, getting to see that and see how they age things in a special system called the Solera system okay. uh, of aging, which is mainly used for sherry, but uh, widely used now for scotch aging. So Very it's pretty interesting. cool. That's awesome. So I just poured myself a glass over here. I'm getting ready to rock. There's a lot of microphones and things going on, so I couldn't pour everyone else's and also do the radio or do the podcast at the same time. There you go. But I'm about to, uh, you know, I'm watching everybody's porn. We're getting ready to rock. Got these cute little glasses. So you know? one cool, yeah, one cool thing, and if you want, we can get you some of the Loch Lomond branded um, uh, glasses. But one really amazing thing about this whiskey that differentiates it from most any other product out there is is that the wine was finished for a year in our. Uh, 2016 Pinot Noir barrels, yeah, um, which wow. just received 94 points from Wine Spectator. Ooh. Wow! Look at that. Yeah. All right. So does that give it a lighter tint? Is it, am I, am I, when it was first being aged, it had actually kind of like a rosy pinkish tint. Yeah. But um, I'm interested to see what you guys think of this because um, wow. this this Scotch has a, about yep. a three to four minute finish on the palate. So it's not to be three to four minutes. I'm three so I am so out of my depth when it comes to testing the stuff. Let's do it. Let's, I haven't yeah, had breakfast. Yet, Cheers. So this is Cheers. the first thing entering my body. <laughs> I had a little Except bit of a little, coffee, a little bit of toothpaste. <laughs> that was about it. Toothpaste. Well, this will get rid of that yep. quickly. But um, this can be enjoyed neat or I like the giant ice cube personally. Um, what as they say, artisanal ice cube. Um, oh, yeah. I'm going to get three or four was, minutes. Of this? That was pretty smooth. It's yeah. very smooth. Wow! You were, when we were with Sir Nick Fowler, you were scared about what was going on. Oh, yeah, and that were. was that was that was very smooth. This was smooth. That was very smooth. Yeah, Sir Nick had. poured us some uh, some scotch, and I don't know we don't know what it was. I but could it actually drink this. And, you and know I what's amazing about this? Sorry, I talk a lot. So if you want me to shut up, just no. Tell okay, me. that's going. what we're here to do. Um, we're on a podcast. What's amazing about this is that it has a little bit of that like smoky peaty yeah yeah uh, quality to the scotch, but in the mid palate, I feel like that sweetness from the peanut barrel comes out, and then it's just coasting along. That's exactly right. I can still, I still got that palate. That I'm about two and a half minutes left on this puppy. I love the wording we're using right now. It's unreal. I love, it's I, love I love the imagery that's used in, in, uh, you know, like whiskey talk. Our listeners are going, "Who the fuck do you guys think?" You are? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like the birch, and we're taking this for a ride. I love, I love all this stuff. It's <laughs> great. I love it. It's amazing. Uh, all right, Lock Loma, we're going to continue to sip this throughout the show. Ooh. I imagine we'll continue to reference it. it. Let's talk warm. a little bit. A but you, it's still going, right? You've had one sip. It's still going. Yes. Oh, yeah. Very I mean, much so. I feel like I could complex. start a car right now. Very complex. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I feel warm. I feel like I could start a car right now I could just by touching it. I don't know why. I feel like it was the if it was the win you. If it was the winter time, you start to start you up right now, your car would be ready to go. Oh, oh, yeah. Do you guys wow. ever read Whiskey Advocate? No. I don't you think should. I'm allowed to. <laughs> I don't have enough facial Are you hair. over 21? If not, I'm in real big trouble. Barely. No. I'm 25, but I okay. look like I'm 16. It's true. You should see him try to grow a beard. I'm trying right now. <laughs> You're gonna. You might. One might sprout out after you yeah, drink I some bet. of that stuff. Don't look at my face. I'm sorry. It's it's something. So what do we, we need to we need to start reading this? That's a little homework. I just think if you're interested in well, wine spectator for wine, but whiskey advocate for whiskey. If you're interested in learning, those are honestly the best resources besides research. Okay, <laughs> we got a couple of folks here who consider themselves you know pretty well versed in this so maybe we'll try to we'll, we'll quiz yeah, if large is here we got to bring you over to large he's a, he's our wine aficionado he i think he'd enjoy this like you wouldn't believe yeah. i mean i'm enjoying it oh i'm uh, if we're enjoying the hell out of it this exactly be over hey the you can tell me if it sucks but i definitely don't think it would oh, no it doesn't not. suck it, doesn't. it does I'm not, not suck it is very special about to take another sip so let's get into a little bit of golf you know what else doesn't suck winning 20 lpga tour events you know how many no. times i finished second how many times? And I just went over this with my coach because we were trying to set new goals and stuff. Twenty-four times. Twenty-four Jeez. second 24 place times. finishes. You know how you know how depressing that is. Oh let me man. ask you this: Do you <laughs> like that's you, a that is a good number and also like a disappointing yeah. number? So let me ask so, you this: It's in, not depressing. It's great. It's good right. Finish. It's good finish. In, in yeah. poker, they always say like you always forget. You always remember the bad hands where you got screwed, and you don't remember the hands where you actually won big pots that you didn't deserve. Do you, some of the losses stick with you more than some of the wins? Um. Yeah. 
Sometimes, but I think drinking whiskey and wine has made me pretty much forget everything. So. <laughs> <laughs> were a lot of that? Were a lot of them losses, or did you like? Were you in fourth and third, and you ended up like squeaking your way into second? Um. Okay, so twenty-four times, probably a third of those would be near misses that I could have had that right. I didn't have, like the women's open at Saucon Valley. I feel like I should have had that one, and that hurt me for a long time. Right. That that hurt. That was heartbreaking. Um. But um. God, I mean. <laughs> somebody asked me to name my my wins in 10 seconds and i was like ah, ah like i couldn't remember any of it right ask you about a couple of your tough losses you can rattle off every moment yeah yes uh, we were we've done know. a hypothetical once where i think it was like would you would you sign up right now to finish in second in like every event you've ever played and you never win and we're like yeah because you just rack i mean at some point you're racking up the money and you just that's keep the going tony going. question tony that's Finau. the tony question it's the tony Finau question in a second like five times like is he like at some point is he starting to get frustrated or is he okay with just finishing in second in every single he's tournament? gonna win yeah. and he's gonna win big yeah. and he is one of the nicest people ever oh yeah and yeah. he hits it really far with a really short backswing like yeah. really far how does he do that? I don't yeah, know. He played Speed. right behind us at uh, Spyglass. Remember that? He was yeah. right behind us. And we were just watching him. We're like, so he missed how does he hit it that far? He did. He missed the cut at the US Open. He's playing right behind us. You know, we're slapping it. We're in the fucking trees. We're like three jack and all over the place. Every time we'd walk five feet off the green, just a ball would come in like five feet from the pin. He hits it really, time. really far. <laughs> really yeah. far. I played in the CVS charity uh, challenge like three years ago, and um, it was like 340 to hit on the green. This is Rhode Island. This is like cool, like mm -hmm. humid weather. And um, they were like, come on, you got to get off the green fast. He's sending it. He, like, flew into the middle of the green. He's just, he's just, <laughs> that's crazy. It I makes it look so easy. Sending, sending the chief. <laughs> <laughs> so you are naturally left-handed, but play golf right-handed. Is that right? Mm-hmm. How does that work? Is that, that can't be that common. Very confused. Very confused. I do a lot of things ambidextrous. Um, I play ping pong lefty, tennis writer left, chopsticks writer left. Cut, mostly lefty, throw ball righty, kick righty, golf righty. I did start lefty when I when I started out. But. Oh, so you started out golfing Because I thought that would just be a, a product of just right-handed clubs being around. Correct. It but was. you said you started lefty. I did, but then my, my father and, ma and mother switched me around. I see. Because there wasn't that much instruction. Yeah. There were clubs available. I, I was hoping there was like some secret we didn't know. Being able to use chopsticks in the right and left hand is, is incredibly impressive to yeah. me. Cause I can, I got, I can barely have a handle on it with my right hand, and you're just like can go back and forth. I don't know, like it's my nickname impressive. on tour and not self-given. I think Paul Creamer actually gave me this nickname is Kerbrain, because I have so many different brains. I have the very serious brain, the sommelier brain, the very goofy, um, self-deprecating brain, like completely random brain. Like we were in the car coming here. And they were talking about something. I'm, I'm like, oh, we should do this and do this. And they're like, where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you were, I mean, when you played, you had a very serious, or when you play, you have a very serious demeanor. What is, is that? That's one it's of your. It's just always been that way. It's not on purpose. It just, if you're going to do something like play professional golf, I feel like you got to be in it. You got to be in it to win it. And you got to be intense and um, can't do it half-assed. What's the most nervous you've ever been over a golf trip? Over a golf shot? Yeah. I mean, probably, I would say, I wouldn't say nervous. I would say, like, adrenaline, like, shaking, kind of, like, was when I won the Open. Um, some of the putts, like, doesn't matter what you do, you got to be, you got to try to be calm, but you're shaking. And um, my heart was, like, du -dum, du -dum, du -dum, mm -hmm. du -dum, like, really fast, walking up to the 18th tee, and I had a two-shot lead, but if... You know, if you hit it in the rough and they hit it in the fairway, it could be a two-shot swing. And um, my caddy at the time, Jason, was saying, well, that's that's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. You know, and so that that was – it was a rush and pretty cool but nerve-wracking, but I handled it. So that was that was amazing. Yeah, is there anything s special or any, any training, you know, uh, that, that you did to prepare for that? Or are you kind of out there like, well, I'm nervous as shit. Let's just keep going and hope well, it works out. Well, I think out. you're always nervous. Even starting regular tournaments, you always have the butterflies. And I think that, I mean, I've worked with enough sports psychologists in my time because I like learning about the mind and making it your 15th club. Um, and you just, there's a, there's a favorite saying of mine is when success is when preparation meets opportunity. And I feel like that's kind of what happened. Yeah, because we had, I'm trying to remember who it was. We interviewed somebody, one of the PGA Tour players in the last couple of months who said that he's nervous on every single first tee. 
I I am. I am because I think it's like you want to make a nice smooth swing, send it down the fairway, but sometimes you, you your rhythm gets really messed up and you just it doesn't, you know, sometimes you just don't know where it's going to go. And I feel like the first hole is like, okay, you get that under your belt, you get a good one, then it kind of settles everything. Right. So it doesn't matter how long you've been playing. I've been just my almost my completion of my 23rd year being a professional on the LPGA. You, you still get the butterflies. How different is your is your game now and your approach to, you know, 23 years ago when you came out? Um, I mean, it's definitely changed. I've kind of grown up, and now I'm a mom of two and uh, got other bu- business interests. But um, I'm still trying to win golf tournaments. You know, it's just uh, I've got a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got a lot going on. Um, and uh, my focus actually going forward for the next however long I'm going to play before I endeavor to do other things um, besides a wine business, charity business, and out and the <laughs> right. Scotch business. Sounds like you already got a lot of things <laughs> yeah, going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, is to get that killer instinct mm-hmm. back. I think playing in Solheim, qualifying for the team this year, getting to play, it's one of my goals, obviously, and I think that's going to ignite a lot of that same stuff in me again. Yeah, how much does that motivate you, the Solheim Cup? I mean, how, how in touch and communication are you with Julie Inkster about that? I'm – in very amazing touch. Actually, one of our Solheim Cup team members, I don't know if she'll be able to, to play this year or not, Brittany Lincecum, yep. she had her baby yesterday, two months early. Preemie, wow. she's stuck in Chicago oh, man. because she was doing an outing. She had her baby doing an outing. <laughs> no wow. way. Everybody's so far healthy. Yeah, that's great. You know, pray for her and, and her husband, little, little, uh, little girl. Congrats to them. Um, but, like, man – that's life. That oh, is yeah. life comes at you. you know? Real I mean, quick. she was like Real right quick. before the cutoff for oh. her doctor saying she couldn't fly, and then poof, there's the baby. So was some hero just delivered it like at a, a on no, the no. Should they made it to a hospital? Okay, like, they sorry. were like, oh, <laughs> they were like, no, yeah, here, guys, here, some guys here, like, right all right, I got cup. here. I'm gonna hit a two iron. This, oh this shit, I'm delivering up the sleeves. <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> I'm ready. No, no, but you know, wow. I mean, Could they were like, they were like, oh, we just have cramps, and this is this. Julie was there. Julie was there. We're like, okay, you need to get to the hospital. Thank that's, God. Thank God. Man. What's the uh, best golf shot you ever hit? The best golf shot I ever hit? One that really sticks out or maybe most important. Oh, wow. I don't know if I can answer that intelligently. <laughs> um, hey, uh, let's circle back to that. I need okay. to think about it. What was the worst golf shot you ever hit in competition? One where you look back and you're like, that was just. I forget all those. That's smart. <laughs> you, you do. Just, you just. No. I was gonna say. She goes no. No. The worst golf shot. Yeah. Oh. I forget all this. You ever top wink, one? Wink. You ever do anything like that? <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, recently, that might be the worst. Okay. That might be the worst. Where was that? Uh. Hmm. Probably. See, I'm telling you, drinking scotch makes you forget. That's kind of the goal. It is the goal. Yeah, so that's so it's doing clearly this stuff. Works. I plead the fifth. Okay, <laughs> I like that. How yeah. far does your stock seven iron go? In the air, in this kind of climate in New York, probably off the ground, 153 yards. Okay. Off a tee, maybe 156, 157. If you're um, in the fairway on a par five, uh, how, what, what distance? Like, what's the max distance you're comfortable? I can, la- I can get there. I can land it on the green. It depends on what's up there. I'm a Libra, by the way. You'll never get a straight answer out of me. <laughs> I can tell we're really <laughs> kind of navigating. We're doing a little. There's a lot going yeah, on here. It's like a dance. Right? Oh, it's a dance. It's we're a dance. dancing. It's a dance. Um, depends on what's up there. That's like asking me what my favorite wine or my favorite child is. I can't <laughs> tell you because I don't know. Um, I mean, I understand every shot's different, but yeah. I mean, if there's no trouble up there, anything. But if there's trouble. Like water to carry or something, I would have to be able to carry it about two fifteen with my three wood. Okay. Yeah. Who uh, who when you first came out, you know, you hear a lot about uh, when people first get out on on tour that somebody older, more experienced, acted as their mentor. Who sort of acted as your mentor out there? You know, I always looked up to the great American golfers, and they always kind of, I wouldn't say took me under their wing, but always kind of watched out for me and that was julie angster it still is julie mm-hmm. julie angster nancy lopez betsy king beth daniel meg mallon pat bradley um Be- uh, betsy king everybody you name it like i f- i really feel like 
they kind of knew what I was going to maybe become and they kind of steered me to be the right way. So that was, that's been pretty cool. And what was that? Like steering you to be the right way? I mean, what changed? How, how, you know, what did you have to change when you were kind of young? Well, I feel like I was very, very, very brash and very, you know, I feel, I feel like I got that from my dad, honestly. Um, and when you're young, you look up to your parents and Mm -hmm. you kind of are how they are a bit. And I feel like they've kind of taught me to let my clubs do the talking and, um, you know, the rest takes care of itself. Do you ever fear that? Like, you don't want to lose kind of your edge and your, hey, I'm, I'm coming out here. I'm going to be a wrecking ball. I'm going to be a badass. Yeah, I mean, belt, yeah, I, I, th- I feel like I'm going through that right now. I feel yeah. like a lot of the stuff off the golf course, albeit very positive, have kind of taken away from the, the, the focus a bit. And um, I wouldn't trade it for the world, right, because I have all these opportunities because of golf. But um, that's, that's my focus is to really, really – find that again find that like i don't care if you hit it by me by 30 Mm -hmm. yards i'm gonna beat you kind of mentality Mm -hmm. and um that's what i'm working on yeah and golf's i mean it's so unique (laughs) right in that it's it's you really against yeah it's always you always say against the golf course but also you against 150 you know other women very talented women right and you got to find some way because everybody can hit the shots everybody's very good everybody's ball striking putting touch is fantastic Mm -hmm. you got to find something that's like no at the end of the day after 72 holes of golf i'm gonna beat you by one fucking stroke that's right you gotta have that thing and i've always had it i feel like maybe since i've had my second child i've softened a bit but i won't soften in the solheim cup Oh, I like that a lot. That's nice. <laughs> so you're gonna win, and then you're gonna drink whiskey on the 18th green. Maybe spray that shit everywhere. There you in go. In Scotland. <laughs> so 2010, you get to number one in the world. Who did you consider at that time kind of your biggest rival? I mean, I can't remember exactly like when Annika, and I'm working on like five hours of sleep, so forgive me. Yeah. I can't exactly remember when Annika um, retired from the game, but I mean, geez. When I first came out on tour, there were like maybe 30 people that could win. Everybody can win now. Everybody on any given day can win. And um, I mean, Lorena was always one that I looked up to. I mean, Yanni Sang. Yanni Sang was very talented player um, in those years. Um, Ai Miyazato. Um, God, you name it. Kari Kari Webb was is and is still around. Yeah. Um, I I had the blinders on. In 2010, especially for that epic win, like, it didn't matter if I was playing against PGA Tour players. I feel like that week it would have been interesting. Yeah, you were lights out. That's all yeah, that Yeah, it's crazy. What was the it? mode I was in. How many? You went by? Twelve. Twelve. That's Ooh. nuts. It was really funny. You'll enjoy the story. Um, <laughs> so the last day we're, like, leading by eight. And, no big deal. And so we're, like, <sighs> we need a new goal setting because if we go out there going, oh, I have an eight-shot lead, I'm going to win this tournament, we're going to lose. Right. And so I said to my caddy, Jason, at the time, if I shoot 68 or better, you have to buy all the groceries for the U.S. Open because we're all staying in house and, and all that. And I said, if I shoot 66 or better, you got to buy all the booze, too. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Shot 66. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's he very... probably spent about two grand that week. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Good. He should have. He very... should have. Yeah, exactly. That's very relatable because a lot of times when I'm like, 25 over par on the 17 tee i'll look at my buddy and be like all right if i make par here <laughs> yeah you, you have to drive different, yeah. else. Different, different numbers fashion, like you're down seven holes but yep. you press them with two with two to go and you're just like all right can this, you guys pick new... up the glass and smell it for a quick sure. second yep. yeah. and see if you can smell mm. vanilla yes baking spices Def- i'm getting vanilla and, and and what was the one you just said i'm definitely getting vanilla coconut dill baking spice like yeah that's a from the toast from our you're taking the words right the out of my mouth from our peanut shut barrel. up trent, trent you don't know what the hell she's talking you about i know, see their face joke. right now folks <laughs> ba- what 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 was the other one baking spices you smell that trent like cardamom cinnamon you can smell cardamom cinnamon <laughs> are you kidding me why are you pressing are you me nuts? Nuts? he said you don't you don't even know, know what that is trent you don't know what cardamom cinnamon i is. know i don't explain i was kidding what, <laughs> explain what cardamom you, cinnamon you is. are you are getting really well, those mad are two different ones but those sarcastic. are just example but i definitely smell oh it's not cardamom like that, cinnamon? that brown sugar caramelized I, mean, I, I smell brown vanilla. sugar vanilla like that's from the my from first the oak. i'm just getting vanilla it's like i got a bowl of ice cream right here Dude, i'm getting drunk just from smelling it same. We'll just disappear if I keep smelling it. Right. <laughs> just up no, the nose. It won't. Right up the nose. No, uh, it won't. Do you watch much golf? I do watch. I do watch golf. 
how often? What do you like to watch? Obviously, the men's majors and the women's majors. And a lot of the time I'm playing, so I don't get to watch. Um, but I always get to Hawaii on Saturday so I can watch Sunday of the Masters. We, I make breakfast in the morning and yeah. have a day. Not and a then bad go little thing to do there. No. Always get to Hawaii. No, definitely not. That's a little routine you've, you've been doing it's a little for routine. That's the last seven or eight years. Because it's a long flight. I mean, right. even from Phoenix, it's a six and a half hour flight. So if I fly on Sunday, I miss the whole thing. Right. So what do you think about what do you think about our boss man Tiger Woods coming back and winning? One of the best comebacks ever. Yeah. In, in all of sports. Mm -hmm. I grew up playing junior golf with him actually, and he he can be a little bit sarcastic when you see him, but um, I love to give him shit. Too. What do you mean like, like that? He can be a little just, bit. He's just mean? he's just Tiger. He's just he likes to give you shit. You know, I saw him at a Nota Begay tournament once. He goes. I said to him, I haven't seen you in a really long time, Tiger. When's the last time I saw you? He goes, in the past. And I'm like, what? He goes, well, if you ask a stupid question, you'll get a stupid answer. I'm like, oh, yeah. thanks, Tiger. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, but, but just like. Just giving you nothing, Tiger. But like just talking talking like in a complete sarcastic, like playful tone, not not like being mean or anything. Right. Just, that's just Tiger. He's just funny. So do you, are you taking anything from Tiger with, with his reignition of the fire where he said like. Yeah. Basically I mean, he, showing seriously, his there's no reason he, he should have ever. This is the amazing thing about Tiger. There's no reason he should have ever even tried to come back. Right. He's got so much money. He's won so many tournaments. Like, what was the point? Right. Mm -hmm. um, but he still had something to prove to himself. And that's what I love about Tiger is that he does it for himself. He does it for the right reasons for himself. He doesn't. He's never played for money. Neither have I. And this is the reason I think everybody loves Tiger because he he makes you feel like a winner. Yeah. And he's winning in his 40s now, and I'm like going to be 42 in October, and I'm like I can do this again. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be able to take some inspiration from that. You have to. It was pretty amazing to watch. Yeah, and it is incredible. I mean, he with all that all that he has to go through. I mean, he talks about the hours of prep work he has to do just to be able to play golf. I mean, just to be able to play a round of golf and he's done that now for years, a couple of years to get back into shape, get his game, get his swing going. Yeah, I'm not working I'm not working out at one o'clock in the morning like he is. <laughs> he's a maniac. But I, I even before I hit a ball, it takes me whether it's doing my exercises for my back or my shoulder or doing my dynamic warm up stuff, stretching, getting into my mental space like it takes me an hour before I even hit a ball. Mm -hmm. That never that never happened in my twenties. Right. Never. So maybe I should just drink a, a, yeah. a shot of so this. This will loosen you up. Yeah. 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 That might be my new pre round routine. I think it already a is. Lock Loman whiskey. I think you're right. I think <laughs> that's been the pre round routine for a long time. So if uh if somebody were to play around a round of golf with a PGA Tour pro and an LPGA Tour pro Speaking of that was my knee. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, we heard a little crack there. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. I mean, you know, that's just, I'm getting older too. We're all getting a little older. Play a round of golf with a PGA Tour Pro, LPGA Tour Pro. Aside from just sheer distance, what is the biggest difference in the game that they would notice? Money. <laughs> 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 money. Fair. Uh, they make a lot more money than we do. Um, but, um, I mean, besides distance, I really don't think there's a lot of difference. I mean, if you've ever seen Lydia Ko hit a flop shot in your life, up there with the best on the PGA Tour. Right. Um, putting, I'll put myself against anybody. Like short game, wedges, I'll put the Korean golfers on our tour up against any PGA Tour player, and I'll put money on that. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so it's it's really just distance. Yeah, I'm very curious like that, that you know, that year 2010 when you get to number one in the world or, or when you win by 12 shots, uh, the women's uh, uh, PGA. Like at that point, I mean, how – like, how good do you think your game would have been at that point against anybody's on the planet, male, female, anybody's? Well, that's the thing. I think we'll always be kind of handicapped, right, because we can't play necessarily unless you're Lexi Long. You know, you, we would have to play from different tees, so I don't think anybody would really ever take it seriously. But I feel like that's really the only difference between the men and the women's game is distance. I'd be, I'd be fascinated to see if you did a like an 80 yards and in tournament, you know? I don't know. That's that's a really good question. I mean, you speak of um, the men against the women and seeing how we would do. I mean, I played in many of the – when they had them, the Wendy's three-tour challenge, and we right. played against the PGA Tour and the senior tour. When I played it, we were – you know, we were on – I was on three winning teams. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and we're hitting longer clubs into the par fives than they are. Right. We're hitting longer irons in the greens than they are. I mean, it's hard to set up the course for the distance disparity. I mean, because – there's some people that hit it as far as Tony Finau and then some that hit it, you know, good distance. But as far as Kenny Perry, I mean, 
Like, and I think it was last week. I believe second place was like twenty six under par or something crazy yeah. like that out on the LPGA tour. Yeah. And it's like I don't right. think At people point, realize how once good. The, once the distance is out of play, I mean they're going twenty six under. Like the, yeah, the I game mean, of we're golf. Yeah, I mean we're not we're not playing five thousand yard courses. I mean our courses are sixty five hundred. Right, 7, that's what yards. we play. I mean, we <laughs> exactly. get toasted. You know, the, yeah, twenty six under. A, right. The Hazeltine tournament we just played the uh, KPMG Women's PGA. Like we played sixty nine hundred yards in very wet conditions and. They played 7,900 yards in the Ryder Cup when they had it there last. And the comparison would have been if apples to apples for distance, how far each tour respectively hits it, they would have played like an 8,200-yard course. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's just absolutely crazy with trouble everywhere, too. Everywhere. Like Hazel T, you, know, right. you just can't miss certain spots. That's absolutely wild. Terrible, <laughs> terrible rough. Just horrific rough. So uh, the, the Women's British Open uh, coming up. In the next month, how, how, how much do you have to kind of change or, or prepare for, you know, Lynx golf? Well, this year's at Woburn, so it's actually a Parkland course. Okay. So it's, it's very much like the normal golf courses that we play all the time. The only factor would be the weather. Yeah. So normally, I mean, last last year we played um, Royal Lytham and St. Anne's, one of my favorite personal golf courses. It's hard as hell. But it's uh, there's bunkers everywhere, but it's like a mental test, more than a physical test almost. Um, but uh, Woburn is more Parkland style, so we get a little bit of a break as far as just having to pitch out and pitch out and pitch out of the bunkers <laughs> 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 um, this year. But um, there's so many great golf courses over there, and, and um, Loch Lomond uh, Whiskies is the obviously the, s the official spirit of the Open, um, whether it's at Woburn or Port Royal Port Rush. I wish I could play Royal Port Rush. That place looks it's on insane. my bucket list. So, yeah, um, we had Faraday in here a couple of days ago and he was telling us all about it. And you could tell, I mean, we even had to stop him and be like, we can sense in your voice, like how excited David, you are about David's this. David's pretty amazing. Yeah. He is genuinely funny. Hey, I got to meet Bill Murray this year. Oh, how was at that? At our Women's Open. How was that? He said three things to me and I cried every time he spoke because <laughs> he was so funny. What did he say? <laughs> Can't repeat Just him. making jokes. Just making jokes like you're wearing that hat because you're a, a vendor or you're just wearing that hat because you like wine like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> sounds about right yeah uh, that was my very horrible what's your Bill what's Murray. your favorite british british open venue <sighs> again libra uh i happen to love royal burkdale okay and i love royal Lytham and st anne's like i really enjoy lynx golf i feel like that's kind of how golf should be like so many different shots like if you're going to hit a flop shot, you better make sure you know what you're doing off that hard pan stuff, you know, with the bounce on your wedges or, you know, you can play with an eight iron or, I mean, I feel like the golf is so good over there. And the problem with me, though, is I hate wearing rain gear, so I get soaked every year I play over there. You just refuse to wear it. I wear the rain pants, and I'm like, I don't care if my top gets wet. It's fine. I don't care. <laughs> just because it restricts you? You, don't, yeah, you just don't feel yeah, right? Yeah, I just, I've never, you know, maybe it's because I'm a woman and I have other parts that men don't have but <laughs> they're hard to wear Could a be rain a factor. jacket yeah, I don't know. hard to wear a rain jacket folks <laughs> uh well christy kerr 20 time lpga tour winner a couple two major championships one by 12 shots not a big deal like loman whiskey which we've the scotch we've had a couple sips and it's still i think it's still kind of hanging around we very much appreciate you coming in thank you yeah, i thought so. you guys were gonna be like hard on me in this show no we're not hard on anybody no no yeah, I mean, you brought, show. you brought scotch. Right? I mean, what probably, are we supposed yeah, to do? That's true. I'll just booze. bribe you every time then. What are we supposed to roast you? I mean, yeah. you brought scotch. Like, I can can't. hang. Yeah. Maybe what next want, time. What, what, what do you want us to say? How, you, want, you want us to be mean to you? No. <laughs> Why the, how the, <laughs> hey, how about when you blew it 24 times and finished second? That's yeah. right. Exactly. <laughs> loser. But anybody, <laughs> loser, anybody interested yeah. in, the, in yeah. the scotch, it'll be released later this summer on LockLomanWhiskeys.com or our wine at KerrCellars.com. Love it. Chris Kerr, thank you very much.